So this is part two of our look at WebSockets. And in this, in this video, what I want to do is I want to, I want to build a front end. I'm going to use React and I want to build an emoji only chat app that uses WebSockets and connects to the WebSocket server that we built in the first video. All right, so I've already created a React app using Create React App. And I'm going to use a couple of different components. And one of them that I'm going to use is this very cool Emoji Mart uh, React component. And essentially, it's, a, it, it's an emoji picker and also a set of components for being able to work with emojis. So we get this nice picker component, and it's highly configurable. You can do a million things with it, which we'll look at. And you also get components for being able to show uh, emojis. So if you want to be able to put an emoji into your app, this thing can display an emoji at different sizes, and it, it just does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. I'll continue to use React Bootstrap because you're familiar with it. We've been working with it, and it's not something new that we need to learn. So other than that, I'm going to use Socket.io uh, for the client library stuff. So I'll switch views here. And we can start in working on this thing. So I have, I have a basic React app here. And I'll just pop open. Here's my app. My app is Hello World. And I want to I wanna slowly build this thing up. OK? So as much as I can, I'm going to try and focus on this. This is going to be as much as I can talking about the WebSocket stuff. So I'll breeze through a bunch of the React things because we, we've done them uh, extensively in previous lectures. But I will talk about some of the things that I have to do that are maybe a little trickier or unique to what we're doing here. OK, so uh, let's dive in. The thing that I want to try and create, I want to create something that would be like what you would use on your phone, where at the bottom of the screen, you're going to have a picker for being able to like a keyboard, only it's going to be an emo emoji keyboard. And then up at the top, you're going to have this scrollable region of all of the messages. Whenever somebody does a message, I want to um, have this thing pop in. And if we look at like iOS messages, if you look at like the messages app, I want to do this sort of style where you have like the messages that you write show up on one side of the screen and the messages that other people write show up on the left. And I'll change the color so we can have different colors on different sides. Um, you know, so I want to build this something that looks kind of like this for working with emojis. OK, so step one, I want to just get my I want to get my app set up properly. So I need to do a couple of things. Um, I need to. I need to get Bootstrap loaded. So I've got the CSS for Bootstrap loaded in my main, uh, you know, in my main index.cs. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to style the HTML body and the root element. So if we look at my index page, you'll see that I have an HTML element, I have a body element, and I have a root div where the app is going to get mounted. What I'm going to do in the CSS here is I'm just going to tell the browser to make all of those things height 100% because I, I want the whole app to fill the space that's there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to hide all of the overflow. So as lots and lots of messages come in, obviously we're building a very popular app. We're going to have hundreds and thousands of users and they're all going to be texting. And we need to be able to scroll just the part of the app that we care about, not the whole thing. We want our keyboard to always be visible. So I'm going to turn off the I'm going to turn off the uh, overflow on that. Okay, so let's go up to the app and let's think about what the app needs to do. The app needs a number of things. So I'm going to pull in from let's pull in some components. I need um, a container. I need uh, a row. And I need a column. Oops. Uh, 
And this, this stuff here that I'm doing, if you recall, if you go to the layout, you'll see, you know, the way that um, layouts get built in React Bootstrap is containers, uh, rows, and columns. So we need to pull all of these things in. And the basic layout of this app is going to be, um, the, it's going to be the following. So I'm going to have, I'll have a, I'll have a container and I'll give this thing, I'll just, I'll give this an ID of app. Inside of my container, I'm gonna have a couple of rows. So the first row is going to contain my chat. The second row is going to contain the emoji picker, like so. And so this is enough now for me to just get something working here. So we'll put in a column and this is gonna be the chat and another column and this will be the emoji picker like so. And so what I can do is, let's just get this reloading. There we go. What I can do now is I can style this. So I wanna just do a couple of things for the layout. So I wanna take my app and um, I need to do a few things. Number one, I wanna make it height 100%. And I also wanna use Flexbox so that I can lay out everything that's gonna be going on inside the app. But the app is gonna be vertical. So I'm gonna say flex, direction is going to be column. Usually it's row by default, but I'm gonna say column. So I want it to go up and I want it to go down. I'm gonna say that I wanna have a maximum width of 450 pixels. So it's, it's meant to be narrow. It's not gonna be a really wide app. And I'm also gonna set the margins on um, the top and bottom at zero and the left and right auto um, margin like so. And then I've got two items inside this Flexbox container. I've got chat and I've got the emoji picker, like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want the chat to flex two units and the emoji picker to flex one unit. So the idea being, you can see here now that However big this is, I want this to be twice as big, right? And it should, the widths here, if I were to um, make this responsive, can I do this here? I can't remember if I can do it in, let me close out of this. So if I make this wider, it's going to center things. You see how it's not, it's not gonna get, um, it won't be too big. So I'm going to go back into my mobile view, try and make this like it's a mobile app. Okay, uh, that's good. So I've got my styling on styling on the app. So let's go back to the app and let's think about what else we need to do. So we're going to need to, uh, let's go into the app. We're gonna need to do our socket IO stuff here. So let's let's start right away getting the connection to the server. Okay, before I build all these other components, I wanna think about how I'm gonna do this. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to have to pull in socket IO client from socket.io slash client. So I'll pull in the socket IO client like so. And I'm also gonna need some pieces of React, some, some hooks to be able to do the work that I wanna do. I'm gonna pull in use state, use effect, and use ref. And I think we've used use state and use effect, but I'm not sure if you've seen use ref before, so this will give us a chance to talk about it. So I need these four pieces for the next part of what I wanna do. Okay, so in my app, this is what my render function looks like. I'm going to return all this data but I also need to manage some other things. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to connect to this WebSocket. So in order to connect the WebSocket, I need to do this 
and maintain this. I need to use, it's a side effect of running this. I'm gonna to have to use use effect to do this. So I'm gonna say use effect and I'm gonna pass in a function and I'm also gonna say I only wanna run this effect the first time. So I'm gonna give it a list of dependencies that's empty. So essentially run this the very first time that after we render the first time, run this code. So this is like your constructor or your onload function or your, the, the initial part of your component being mounted and you wanna run ng on init if we're talking about Angular. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna create a socket and I wanna hang on to it. And I wanna be able to use this socket inside my component. So with React, when you have when you have pieces of data that are going to be created at runtime and the order of when they get created is going, to, is going to differ, one of the things that we do is we use references. So a reference is kind of like a pointer that you're saying, I'm going to have a pointer to an item which will um, be created later on or may exist, may not exist. So it's a way to hold on to something without holding on to the thing. It, you, you can refer to something through the reference. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna make a socket reference is equal to use ref. So use ref allows me to create a reference to a thing. And then later on I can attach to that thing. So right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say socket ref dot current. So in, in React, the way that you refer to the instance that the reference points to is you use current. So socket ref current is equal to, and I'm gonna make a socket IO client, and I have to tell it where to connect, HTTP localhost 5000. So I'm gonna connect back to my server like so. Now in my effect, the other thing that I need to do, whenever you have an effect where you're sort of creating some long lived thing, and then when the component is unmounted, you need to do cleanup. The way that you do your cleanup is you return a function. So you return a function, and inside this function, you do any cleanup that you have to do. So in my case, I'm gonna do socket ref.current.disconnect. Like so. So if I, let me just get my console open here. Uh, web developer, developer tools, console. So I should have a connection back to the server. In fact, we could probably see if we do. You can see here that I am currently connected as green chicken. <laughs> so uh, I have made a socket connection. If I refresh the page, you'll see that I'm now connected as magenta hyena. So my WebSocket connection is working. I'm not doing anything with the socket yet, but I have a WebSocket in my React app, which is connecting back to the server. And the only tricky React thing that I had to do was I had to use the use ref hook and I had to create the reference. Essentially what I want is I want this I want this um, WebSocket connection to live even if the component gets torn down or recreated or whatever React does with the virtual DOM, I want it to live on. So I'm using a ref to say to it, listen, I wanna be able to retain access to this thing and this, I'm gonna stuff an instance into the socket reference.current so that I can work with it. Okay, so let's do a few more things. So the first thing, if you'll recall, remember what our socket does. <clears throat> when we connect, we generate a name, and the first thing that we do down here at the bottom is we send an initialization message with the name, the number of clients, and all of the current messages. Name, clients, number of messages. So let's, let's use that in React. So in React, what would we do? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say socket ref dot current dot on init. So when init happens, I'm going to receive an object, a data object, and I wanna do something with it. So we're gonna get name, messages, and clients. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to hold on to that. So in the language of React, that is state. 
the server is sending us the initial state of the application when we connect. And so what we need to do is we need to work with some state. So up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some state. So we're gonna say name and set name is equal to use state. So we're gonna say this is the user's name. We don't know what it is. Const uh, clients and set clients equals use state. And I'm gonna initialize this to zero because initially there are no clients that we know about. And I'm also gonna say messages, set messages. So the list of messages that are that the that the server knows about, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get them sent to me. So I'm gonna say use state and I will initially make that an empty array. So I have an array of messages, a string for the name, <clears throat> and an integer for the number. So when we initialize with the server, when the socket gets the init event, I'm gonna set all of this. I'm gonna say set name is equal to data.name, set clients is equal to data.clients, set messages is equal to data.messages. Okay, so that's the initial data. Now our API also does some other things. So every time there is a change in the um, a change in the number of clients connected, we're going to broadcast a count event, and we're going to pass in the number of clients. Okay, so on the React side, how would we cope with that? Well, we keep track of the number of clients in state. So what we need to do is we need to listen on the socket ref.current. So when the count event occurs, we're gonna get a new count. So I'll just call it count. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the uh, clients with the new count, like so. So we have the initialization. We know whenever there's an update, we know the update. What else does our socket server send? So if we go over here, whenever a client sends a message to the server, the server is going to broadcast that message back out and it's gonna send an object that has a name and, an, and a list of emojis. So this is what a, me a message object is, name and emojis, and we're gonna broadcast that out. So that means that on the app side, we have to be prepared to receive messages. So let's do that. Socket ref dot current dot on messages. So we're going to receive, uh, actually not messages, message. And so we're going to receive a message object like so. So we're gonna receive a message object and what we need to do is we need to update our state for the messages. Now I want you, this is a little tricky. We are going to keep track of all of the messages in an array because in our chat app, what we want is we wanna have line after line after line of all of the messages. And so the React app is gonna render that into the component for us. But at the data level, we're gonna receive these messages and we're gonna receive a new message and we need to merge it into the list of messages that we have. The way that React does state, as you'll recall, React wants immutable data structures. So it wants data, it wants state that doesn't ever change. If you want to change the value of something, you have to create a new immutable instance. And so this is done so that React can, can do comparisons, really fast comparisons to basically say, is this data the same as the old data? If it's not, then we need to re-update the app and we need to re, you know, recalculate all of the diffs that need to get applied into the DOM. So we have a new message and we wanna put it into our messages. So, you know, you might be tempted to say messages.push message. You can't do that when you're working with state. So we wanna do the equivalent of this, but we can't do that. 
So I'm gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna call set messages and set messages is going to, first of all, I need the current state of the messages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there's two ways to do set state, right? So one way is to do this, you know, just pass in some new data or I could pass in something. I could say, you know, pass in a, a new array of whatever, pass some new array in here and I'll use that. But I'm gonna use the second method for using a set state call in React, which is I'm going to ask it for the current state messages and it's going to pass it to me in a function. So I'm gonna use the function method of setting state, this callback function. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, let's create a new array. The new array has two things in it. It has all of the current messages like that. And it also includes the new message like that. Okay, so this code is a little tricky. So let me, if you've not, let's just go over here for a second. If I have messages, you know, let messages is equal to an array, one, two, three, four. Messages is an array with uh, four items in it. If I wanted to make let messages two, if I wanted to make a clone or a copy of this, one thing I can do is I can say make a new array and then inside it, put in the like the internal part of the array. Imagine taking the just the part inside the array, doing that. And so messages two is a new array. Messages equals messages two, false. They are not the same object. It's a clone, it's a copy of that object. So what I could also do is I could say messages three is equal to everything that's inside messages plus the number five, like that. And so this is a way to clone it, but add one more thing. Sorry, messages uh, three. Messages three is now an array that had everything that was inside the original array plus an additional element inside of a new array. So this tricky little bit of code here says, set the state of messages to be equal to what happens when you run this function. What happens when you run the function is, take the current value of messages and use it to create a new array, cloning everything inside the original messages and then adding this one new message. So I'm adding a new message to the end of the array. So when I'm done, whenever I receive a message from the server, that message is now gonna be inside, uh, it's gonna be inside the, uh, the messages array. So this, I think, is just about it. This is what our WebSocket code looks like. When, when the component has been rendered, as soon as it's done being rendered and only the first time, I wanna run this effect, this side effect. And what it's gonna do is it's going to create an instance of a WebSocket that connects to localhost 5000 and it's gonna retain a reference to it here, socket reference.current. I'm gonna listen for initialization message, meth, messages and I'm gonna set up all my data. I'm gonna listen for updates to the count and I'm gonna update my data and I'm gonna listen for messages coming in and I'm gonna update my data. So I have, I have a lot of my code written now for, for doing what I need to be able to do. Okay, so let's go, let's go further. Let's actually use some of this data, okay? So we have a bunch of things that we need to, we need to be able to do here. So the first thing we do, I'm trying to think of what the easiest way to think about this is. Maybe the easiest way to think about this is to think about the emoji picker first. So for the emoji picker, what I'd like to be able to do is at the bottom of the screen, I wanna put this keyboard and I also wanna put a message at the bottom that says, this is how many uh, clients are currently connected and um, a place where you'll see the messages that you're typing and a place to click send and so on, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new component 
I'll call it the uh, emoji picker.js. And in the app, let's use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to be emoji picker. And let's pull that in. Import emoji picker from emoji picker. Okay, save this and this will fail because I don't have a component. So let's, let's work on the emoji picker. Let's think about what this thing needs to do. The emoji picker is export default emoji picker. Uh, okay, so what does it need to return? So it needs to return uh, a div. And inside the div, I want two things. Um, to start with, I need the, um, I wanna have like an input, a place to put input, which I'll come back to. And I wanna have the, um, the emoji picker, and then I wanna know how many, I wanna have some printout of the number of clients. Let's keep this simple. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say, I'm gonna put my, uh, my picker. So I have to pull this uh, picker in. This is the emoji mart picker that I want to use here. So let's use it as you see here. So I'm going to import the picker from emoji mart. And I'm also going to import the CSS file that it uses. Import emoji mart uh, CSS and the emoji emoji mart.css. So it has a, a component and some CSS that it needs to use. And then I'm gonna put my picker here like so. Uh, I'll just do a component like this. So I'm gonna put the picker in and uh, let's give it a title. Title will be um, Pick your emoji and let's say um, I want to show an emoji. So the way this thing works, you can specify, I'll just do what they do here. This is good. Like I'll take this and I'll copy this right here. It's very configurable, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time making this work. Uh, export default function emoji picker. So we go back here and there we go. So we've got uh, we've got our emoji picker here. The emoji picker lets me go through and pick through different ones, or I can search, you know, for an apple or something like that, and I can select. Um, I can click on these and um, where's my network? Network. Uh, good. Okay. Console. I don't have anything that happens when I click on these yet, but I have the ability to click. Okay. So that's not bad. Now, the other thing I want to do is below this, um, picker, I also want to put a div and inside this div, I want to have uh, bold, I'll say emoji chat bold. And then there are uh, this many clients. Connected like that. Which means that I need to pass the number of clients in to this component as props. And I also need to on my app, I need to pass the clients from state down to this component. So there's one client connected right now. If I open up a second one of these, I should have uh, two, I do. I have two clients connected. I have two clients connected here. And um, I think the only other thing I wanna do is uh, I just wanna clean up the styling here a bit. So I'll use um, React Boots 
Bootstrap has these nice utility class functions. So if you want to center text, you can say, you know, center the text. And I could also change the margin on the bottom. So I bump the model. So it just pushes it up a little bit. Um, or I could say put the margin on both the top and the bottom, like, you know, like that. So, you know, you can decide um, how you want that thing to look. Uh, okay, so that's pretty good. This is it here. And this is, this is what it looks like in a larger window. And this is what it looks like when we're inside of a, a view like this, like inside of a, a more mobile view. Okay, that's pretty good. So, whoops. <clears throat> the next thing I wanna do is I wanna put a little bar up here to be able to say, um, I wanna have like an input. I have to basically create an input. So I'm gonna make another component, which I'll pull in now. It doesn't exist yet, but I'm gonna import the emoji input from emoji input. And so I need a new file. So I'm going to, in the emoji picker, I'm gonna use that, um, I'm gonna put it above all this. So I'm gonna put another div around the whole thing. Whoops, another div around the whole thing. And essentially I'll put it on top of those things. So my emoji, Input component will go on top like that. So I have this line here where I can put my, my input. All right. So let's think about, um, let's think about this emoji input for a second. So the emoji input, essentially what it needs to do is it needs to display a list of emojis. So just a bunch of emojis and draw a box around them. And then I also wanna have a button where um, the user can click and say, send, I wanna, I wanna send something off. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the uh, import emoji. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this from the emoji library so that it can display an emoji for me. And I'm gonna import the button component from React Bootstrap, like so. All right, so let's clean this up. So what do I wanna do? I wanna have a, um, I wanna have a div and, um, I'll give this a name. I'll say this is gonna be equal to emoji input. Inside emoji input, I have two things. The I'll do the second thing first. Second thing is my button. So I have a button and the way that these buttons work, if you recall, components, how do I get to button? So a button, you give it a color like variant equal primary and it'll look like this. You give it a bunch of text um, and you can set other aspects of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I wanna have a button, variant equals primary, use the primary color. In this case, that'll be blue. And I'll do some other things with it later, but for now I'm just gonna put send. So I have send. So I have, a, I have a send button here, that's good. And I need to have another div here where I'm going to display my uh, emoji input display. So I'm essentially I'm gonna fake, like there isn't an emoji text box, but I kinda wanna make an emoji text box. And I wanna display a list of emojis. 
So if you think about how forms form controls work in React, we need to we need to be able to render something in a control that we receive from a parent. And we need to be able to have events on our form control use uh, functions, event handlers that come in from a parent. So I'm gonna update this component so that it receives some things on props. Number one, it's gonna receive a list of emojis that are supposed to be displayed. And it's also gonna receive an on submit function handler. So let's think about this. The button, um, what do I wanna do with the button? When the button gets clicked, I want to call on submit. Oops. So I'll call the submit function when this button gets clicked. And I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to say that the button should be disabled if the emojis.length is equal to zero. So if you don't send any emojis in, then we expect. Uh, we expect to disable to disable this button. Okay, this will fail because I haven't passed props. Emojis is undefined. So we're gonna have to deal with that. But before we do, let's render these emojis inside this div. So how does this library do emojis? So this is what an emoji is gonna look like in code. It's basically an, a JavaScript object. So what you can do is you can just give this data structure, this JavaScript object, you can give it to the emoji component and it will take care of rendering it. And so if I have like a list of emojis, it'll be multiple emojis that I wanna be able to do. So emojis is gonna be an array of emojis. So essentially my goal is to, is to render something like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if emojis.length is true, if, if we have emojis, uh, then what I want to do is I want to render emojis dot map and I want to get back the current emoji in the list plus the index in the array that I'm working with and I want to then render an emoji. Emoji is going to specify a key. Remember that whenever we use a map to generate items in React from a list, we have to specify a key to uniquely identify this item for, uh, for React. And the second thing that I need to do is I need to pass all this data. Emoji prop is equal to the emoji data that we're getting. And finally, let's just set a size, say 18 as an example. And this, it's not happy with me here because I didn't close my component like that. Okay, so this says, receive an array of emojis. And if the length of the emojis is greater than zero, if it's truthy, then what I wanna do is I want to render out a series of emojis, one beside the other, all of them across and put them into this box. And I'm also gonna put a button and the button will be disabled if there aren't any emojis in the list. So in other words, you can't click send unless you've got some emojis that are in there. And I guess the last thing I need to do is I just need to do a bit of styling on this. So I have the emoji input and I also have the emoji input display, this bar that's gonna go across. So what I'd like to do here is I'll add another file I will, um, I need to import the, the styles that I'm gonna write here. So let's import the uh, emoji input.css, which doesn't exist yet. And I'm going to create it now, new file, emoji input.css. Okay, so emoji input.css needs to style two things, the emoji input and the emoji input display. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have, basically I wanna have this div, 
contains two things. So it contains um, a div and a button. So I want to tell the browser to render this in a row. And I want the first element to take as much space as possible and the second element to just occupy as much space as it needs. And so I can do that with Flexbox. So here what I can do is I can say display flex, make the width of this 100% of what's available, and then just add some padding around it so there's a little bit of white space and a little bit of uh, empty space at the top, which I'll show you in a second. And this one here, the input, I want it to flex one. So basically use as much space as possible. And let's add a little bit of padding around it. And uh, will this render yet? Probably not because I'm not passing props. Whoops. Emojis is not defined. Let me pass these props down so we can use this. So what I'm going to do is to begin with, I will just say the emoji picker uh, is going to need a list of emojis, which we need to keep in state. So let's just add another piece of state here. Uh, const emojis set emojis use state and let's just have an empty array. And that's going to mean that my picker, I can pass down um, on the picker, I can pass down a couple of things. One thing I can pass down is the emojis that are currently being typed like that. And in my picker, I can receive the list of emojis and I can pass it down to my input uh, component here, emojis equals emojis. So I haven't done submit yet, but I've got enough. I have enough to be able to work with this. Okay, we're not there yet. So this input, open this up, open this up. And let's see what's going on here. So what do we have? We have the emoji input like this, and you can see that it's taking up 100% of the space, and then the button is being pushed off down on the other side. Have I done something wrong? Emoji input display. So this should be display flex, and it's not being done display invalid property name. So I've got a typo. Emoji picker, emoji input, CSS. Yeah. Display like that. Okay. That's better. So now we have, we have this sitting nicely like this. So we can, at this point, um, I could just style this to look a little bit more like a box. So a little bit more like an input box. So we could say that it has a border one pixel solid blue. And we could say, um, you know, we want to have a little bit of room on the right hand side. So we could say margin right is, I don't know, like five pixels. And we could also just cut off those corners. So we could say border radius is equal to like three pixels something like that. So we have we have something that looks like that. So we could play around with the colors and the widths and all the rest of it, but this is probably uh, this is probably good enough for what we want to do right now. Okay. So let's think about the next thing that we need to do here. The next thing is I need to be able to click on this picker and then have it display in this list right here. So what we're doing is we're making sort of our own uh, form. So in the emoji picker, whenever there, whenever um, somebody clicks on the emoji picker, I want to do some things. So let's say we go here. So um, I want to say on click is equal to a function, and I'm going to receive the emoji that was clicked. And what I want to do is I want to pass it to a function that I'm going to receive from the parent. So I'm going to say on change emoji. 
unchanged needs to be passed down to me, like so. So I'm going to call an onChange function. The onChange function needs to live in the app. Okay, so here I'm going to say onChange. OnChange is equal to, and I'll just handle on change. Now handle on change doesn't exist yet, so we'll write it. Function handle on change receives an emoji. And what should we do with that emoji? Well, I'm gonna do the same basic thing that I did before. I'm gonna set the emojis state. So emojis is an array up here, set emojis. And I'm going to set it to a new array, which includes all of the current emojis plus the new one, like that. And then that should render down. So if I run this, let's see. So if I click on one of these and I click on another one, you can see this is working. Like that. Okay, now my emoji picker, I've got some bug here in the input where I'm saying if um, if emojis.length, then I'm gonna do this. Otherwise, let's do null. So if I do that, that should, if I refresh this, yeah, it's empty. So now it's empty, and if I click on this and this, I get these emojis popping up here in my box. Okay, that's pretty cool. So what I need to do now in my app, I need to add something for when the user clicks submit. Handle on submit. So think about the submit function. Function handle on submit. And so what should we do when the user clicks submit? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to send the list of emojis that we just typed to the WebSocket server. So let's do that. Let's grab our socket ref, whoops, socket ref .current, and let's emit a message. So we're gonna send a message to the server and we're gonna pass it some data. So the data that I'm gonna pass is I'm gonna pass my name whoever I am, and I'm also gonna pass the current list of emojis that I have, like that. Okay, and the next thing I need to do is I need to clear the list of emojis that I've typed. So if I type these two emojis and I send them to the server and I click submit, then what I wanna do is I wanna set emojis to be equal to an empty array. So in other words, I'm done. I don't need to edit that message anymore. It's gone, it can be sent like so. So let's start with this and let's, let's do the following. Let's make sure that I've got my picker. It needs to receive on submit and I need to pass on submit. down to the input component. And why is it unhappy with me? On submit, there's no corresponding. There, okay, my computer's just being slow. So I'm gonna pass the submit handler down to the input component. So the input component receives it. Whenever this is called, it's gonna do submit. So this is interesting. So let's, if, if this is working properly, we should, let's refresh this. And you can see this down here. Uh, let me move this over a little bit, put this up like so. And let's look at our network tab. So I have a socket connection here and you can see 
um, information being sent to and from the browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on a emoji and then I'm gonna click send. And do you see what just happened? This message was just sent. So my name is Violet Laus, that's beautiful. And my list of emojis is the smiling face with three hearts emoji. And you can see on the server side that a message was received, Violet Laus, and then all of this was, this is the list of emojis that were sent. And that data will get broadcast to the other server. So the other servers are gonna receive those, but we don't currently have anything that can render that. So if I do multiple of these and I click send, you'll see that now I have an array of three different emoji objects that are being sent to the server and then the server is broadcasting those out again. Okay, we're getting closer. So what we need to do now is we need to do our chat, our chat view here. So the chat view, if you think about our app, we have a list of messages in an array. We need to render those messages. So what I need to do is I need to make an app, sorry, make a component. I'm gonna import a chat component. I'll call it chat, like so. And I'm gonna put the chat component here. Uh, this will be chat. And I want to pass the list of messages that we have down to the chat component, like so. Okay, so we don't have a chat component, so we need to write, now we need to write a chat component. Okay, so let's write it. So I'm gonna make a new file, chat.js. And what does chat need to do? So export default function chat. It receives messages on props, and we're gonna render this. So what are we gonna render? We're gonna return a div, and we'll say id equal messages so we can style it. And I'm going to say if messages, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, whoops, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing we did before. I'm gonna render uh, an array of components. Then we're gonna say messages.map message idx. And I'm gonna, I don't have this component written yet, but I wanna render a message component. The key is gonna be idx, and the name of the person who sent it is gonna be message.name. And the emojis will be message.emojis, like so. Okay, so we'll have to import message from message like that. All right, so we need to do a message component. So let's do a message component, new file, message.js. And a message is going to, I'm gonna use, React Bootstrap has, um, what do they call it? Um, a badge? Yeah. So I basically want to have like one of these sort of rounded pills like this for each person's name. So I'm going to import a badge from React Bootstrap badge. And I'm going to import again the emoji component from emoji marked like so. Export default 
uh, function message. It receives a name and emojis. And it's going to return a div. And inside the div is, I'm going to have two things. I'm going to have a uh, div that contains the badge. I want to use the pill variant. And let's say variant equals success. I'll use green to start. And I'll put the person's name like that. And then underneath this, I'll have another div. And this will be my, whoops, list of emojis. And I'll say, take the emojis and map this so that I have emoji IDX. And I want to do an emoji component. Key is equal to the index. And the emoji content is equal to the emoji object. Size equals 18, something like that. And OK, this is already working. You can see that already I've got on both sides. So if I type out this and I send it, You'll see over here that I received uh, Violet Macaw sent this and it shows up, it pops up. Okay, we can do a couple of things to improve this. So uh, let's give some classes to this stuff so that I can style it. So number one, uh, one of the problems that I have is, well, there's a couple of problems. The first one is I'd like to put these all in a line instead of being on two lines like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Flexbox again and so let's call this uh, class name equals, let's call it a message. So I need a file. Let's import um, message.css and make a new file. Message.css. Okay, message.css needs to do a couple of things. So we're gonna define a message class message class is going to use Flexbox. And let's just put some space around it. Five pixels on the top and bottom and nothing on the left and right. Refresh this. And what's cool about WebSockets, you can see how when, my, when I'm connecting, I'm getting the last messages automatically. So it makes debugging and all this stuff really cool because you can disconnect your app and your WebSocket reconnects, downloads the initial data, renders all that data for you, and it's like you never left. So you have you can kind of pick up where you, uh, where you were before. So you can see that these two things are sitting beside each other. And we could style these emojis. So we could say that each one of these emojis um, if we give this div here, emojis uh, like so, we could style, you know, padding four pixels or something, just so it sort of opens it up, gives a little bit of extra space. So this is pretty cool. Okay, so now there's one thing that I want to fix. And that is, I want to be able to distinguish between um, I want to be able to distinguish between messages that I wrote and messages that other people wrote. So I want to be able to say I want. Okay, so if you take a look at our message, I want to add another prop called me, and me is going to be true if I wrote it. If I didn't write it, then it's not going to be true. So because I have this me prop, I can do a couple of things. So I can set another class name here. So for example, I can say um, class name is equal to, and I'm gonna say if this is me, then I want it to be message plus the me class. Otherwise, I just wanna use the message class. So both cases are gonna be message, but one of them is gonna be me. Down here, I can say 
instead of just using the green color, I can say, for example, um, if me, then use the primary color. And if it's not me, then use some other color, success color, and display it like that. So, so far I'm not using the me uh, prop, so it doesn't change how anything looks. But let's, let's make a change in our style sheet. So right now we're using Flexbox, and what I'm gonna do is, if I were to change the flex direction, flex direction right now is equal to row, like this. Okay, so that's what, that's what it looks like right now. But another thing you can do is you could do row reverse. And if you do row reverse, what it'll do is it will flip, let me refresh this. It'll flip it to the other side, you see that? So it takes the row and it renders things in the opposite order. So for our message component, we have two divs. We have one here and one here. So if I do flex direction row reverse, it'll just reverse the order that it renders those in. So that's a really easy way in CSS. So if I write a class called me, I can say, normally I want to use flex direction row. I can even just type it out so you can see flex direction row. But if the me class is applied, then I want to use flex direction row reverse. Okay, that's very cool. Okay, so we're getting closer. We've got this me thing, but we never use it. So the message is coming from messages. So our, and that's inside of chat. So chat is rendering this out here. So what I need to do is I need to pass in um, me is equal to message.me. And right now, none of our messages have a dot me because we haven't put one in there yet. So we have to fix that. Okay, let's think about this. So back up here in our app, whenever the user hits the submit button, so they type something and they hit submit, it's gonna go through this function right here and we're going to, we're gonna create a message that we send to the server. So we're sending the message to the server and we're resetting what we have in here. But I wanna do one more thing. I wanna set the messages that we have locally to be updated. I wanna use a new array. So I wanna have a new array and the new array is gonna have all of the current messages, but it's also gonna have one new object. And the new object is gonna have the name, it's gonna have the emojis that are um, currently typed, but it's also gonna have me is equal to true, like that. So I'm gonna save this and I'll show you what'll happen. So I'm gonna click on, um, well, let's do something different. Let's do this stopwatch and I'm gonna click send. And you'll see that what just happened is that this has now shown up on the right hand side instead of on the left hand side because I set the me property to be true on this object. But if you look at the other one over here, you'll see it's on the left because this person didn't write it. However, if I do this and I send it, let me refresh this. If I do this and send it, you'll see that it pops up on the right, indigo horse on the right. But if I go over here, you can see it's on the left because it depends who you are. It's automatically flipping these things back and forth, which is very, very cool. So we can keep we can keep uh, typing away here, doing more of them, and I click send, and I click send, etc. And you'll see that one of the things that's happening now is it's pushing down my display. See how it keeps pushing it down? So that's not what I want. So what I need to do is I need to make this component here my in my chat, I need to set um, I need to set the component to be scrollable. So if you'll recall, in our app, we have basically two components. We have the chat component, that's where it lives inside this row, and we also have the emoji component here. So what I'm gonna do is in my CSS, I'm gonna make this chat component scrollable. So right now, if you remember in our 
top level CSS, we said that we want to turn overflow off. That's why I have no scroll bar right now. There's no scroll bar here because the, the body and the root element have overflow turned off. It's hidden. So eventually my keyboard will just disappear if I keep pushing this off the bottom. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my CSS for the app. And inside the chat here, I want to say overflow y is equal to scroll. And so now what we get is we get this scrollable chat region right here at the top. And depending on how much room you have, it'll scroll more or less as we go. And if I type something new and I click send, it's put it down here at the bottom. So React has rendered it down at the bottom. If I go over here, it's rendered something new down at the bottom. So we have one more problem that we need to solve. And that is I need a way in my, um, in my chat to be able to deal with the fact that the, um, the messages chat view needs to be scrolled automatically. So there's actually a way to, um, the browser has a really cool thing called scroll into view. So if you give the browser an element, you can tell the browser to scroll that element into view and you can actually control what it does. So if you set it equal to true, scroll into view true, it'll put the top of the element aligned with the top of where you are. If you say false, it'll align the bottom of the element instead of the top. So we could use this in what we're doing here. Okay, so I want you to think about how we would do this. So if we go to our chat window, essentially what we need to do is we need to scroll things depending on when the messages change. So the, the way to do this in React is to use an effect. So I'm going to import use effect, and I'm also going to use uh, ref from React. Okay, so I'm going to write an effect in here. Use effect. And what I want to do is, this isn't correct yet, but essentially what I want to do is I want to say, um, take the messages div and I want to scroll it into view to the bottom. And when do I want to do that? Every time the messages prop changes. So when you define an effect, like back here in app, when we made this effect, we set the list of dependencies to be nothing. So it's just going to happen at, the, at it's going to happen once. If you don't put anything here, like if you do this, it will render it forever in an infinite loop. You almost never want to do this. So you need to list your dependencies. So if we have no dependencies, that means do it only on load. Over here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to run this effect again every time messages changes. When does messages change? Well, in our app, messages changes whenever we receive a new message from the WebSocket or whenever we put a new message into the messages array ourselves. So there's two ways that it happens. Either we do it or the web server sends it to us. So in our chat application, we want to scroll this into view whenever this happens. So how do I get a reference to this element here? So in React, if you want to have a reference to an element that's going to be created at runtime, what you have to do is you have to use a ref. So I'm going to do that same trick again. Const messages ref is equal to use ref like this. At the beginning, the first time this runs, we don't have an element to refer to. So whenever you want to refer to an element using a reference, you say ref equals messages ref. You tell React, I want this element here, this div, I want to attach it to this ref so that I can use it. So now what I can do is I can say messages ref dot current dot scroll into view false like this. So if we do this now, if I send something and I click send, do you see how it 
scrolled down. Let me open up two windows at the same time. I'm going to put another window over here. Whoops. So I've got another window over here on the right. I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to refresh this. Okay, watch on the right over here. So I'm going to do some emojis. I'm going to send them and over here you'll see that it Indigo Woodpecker, which is me, put this over here. I'm Indigo Woodpecker. If I do another one, send, it scrolls up. Over here, if I do this, if I send, send, it scrolls up. So what it's doing is it's keeping track. Every time messages changes, it runs this effect and it scrolls this element into view, putting the bottom of the element into view so that I can see all of the elements that are here. And if I were to go to this page for the very first time, like if I open this up in a brand, whoops, that's not what I want. If I grab this and I go here and I paste this in, you'll see that it loads all the messages that everybody has been saying and puts me down to the bottom so that I could start in on the conversation. And my WebSocket takes care of remembering that three people are currently connected. All of these browsers are connected up to are connected up to the server and um, getting these messages live as they come in. Okay, so, I mean, there's so many other th things we could do with this. Like we could, we could extend this a million ways, but um, you know, this is already, this is already extremely usable in its current form. Um, being able to, you know, like we could change, change skin tones, for this, send this. Uh, that's an interesting bug. Oh, because I'm not, I'm probably not persisting this in the object that I'm sending. So likely there's more, there are bugs to fix. Yep, skin tones is a property that I need to send in the object. So we could play with this a lot more. We could, we could save the name of the user that we're working with. We could put that in local storage so that when you connect up again, you, you know, I would always be Azure land foul every time that I connect rather than some other, uh, you know, some other, um, some other name. So I'm going to stop there because this is, you know, probably about the length of time that I want to spend uh, building this. I'll put the code online. And I wanted you to see that we could send more complex data than just chat messages. So here we are, you know, we're, we're serializing and sending um, arrays of emojis. We're receiving them on the other side. We can do any kind of display that you want. Like if you want to build a video game display, if you want to build um, some kind of, you want to build Slack or Teams, if you want to build like a chat app, like it's, it's really easy to do this stuff. In about an hour, we've been able to uh, build something that looks you know, pretty usable. Like you could, you could do a lot with this already and use it as the base for doing, you know, doing the kinds of things that we're talking about. The real important parts of what, we did, of what we did today are essentially what's happening inside this effect right here. Being able to connect to a server, open a two-way channel between the browser and the server, and then be able to stream real-time data back and forth between multiple browsers and the server and share data, collaborate across, the, across all of those to build like one app experience. Anyway, I would highly encourage you to play with this. You could try and rebuild this in Angular if you want. You could download this and use it as the basis to try and improve it. I'm sure you could make it better than what I've done here with my crappy CSS. Um, but we have a base. Anyway, this is um, a, a good intro to WebSockets and a good place to pause.